You know, guys, every once in a while we like to focus on um, we like to focus on these propagandists that work for the Chinese government. Yeah, and um, we've for introduced fun. you to Rick. If you don't know who Rick is, Rick is this guy. Wow, that's a little too much for me. You might know him from another soundbite. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, so good. <laughs> <laughs> he likes exactly. to fake these. So you know, Rick is <sighs> part of this uh, Xinhua news. Xinhua is a Chinese you know, state media, it's the top. And they make these ridiculous videos where they get these uh, foreigners who work as propagandists for the Chinese government. So we came across this new guy, and he's not new. He's actually been around for a long time. I don't know how we he's didn't know. by yeah. our radar. So we wanted to introduce you, but we're going to do it in a bit of a roundabout way. We first have to show you Rick's challenge. We've been promising you that you would see Rick skydive. So, I love Rick now. Yeah, no, he's actually really cool. He's, we, we, he's amazing. We, we like him. He's out of all the he's shills. He's the good shill. He's, he's, he's the good hearted one, you know? I mean, he's working for like a tyrannical genocidal regime, but he, yeah. he does it in a nice way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, so good. So anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look. So, um, well, here we go. And remember, the audio and stuff hasn't been edited like it's no, bad. They're no. very bad at doing audio in Chinese state media. Hey guys, look what I've got. Wow. What is it? My guess is mooncakes. Oh, I think you're right. It's mid-autumn day. My yes, this is the special handmade mooncake from Shanxi. Let's try. Wow. Oh no, you can't eat it yet. It has notes in it. Oh, oh, okay, oh. it's read you can eat a mooncake oh. only when you finish a task you have never done before. After the challenge, you can eat the mooncake and pass it on. Nice. It's a mooncake mm. challenge. Hold on, pause it. Okay. What? Okay, I want to ask. Yeah. There's two guys here, two shills, right? Yeah. Rick and then the other guy, we're going to have you name eventually. Yeah, yeah, you guys are going to help us name him. Yeah, because I feel like he's got to have like a, a character behind yeah. some lore. Yeah, once we introduce you to him, then you can come up with a name. But what do you think, as, a, as an audience out here, when you're watching this, what do you think Rick's challenge is? Because he gets to choose his own challenge, right? Yeah. What do you think Rick would pick? What Before well, you watch this, what do you think Rick would pick? I mean, in real life? In real life, yeah. I know, like eat a chili or something. Okay, I would think he's like gonna rollerblade backwards. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Do a, like, do a 360 spin or. I guess, like uh, roll rollerblade. I would rollerblade through the park of Beijing sure. and see the beautiful sights. Yeah, you know, something yeah, like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Let's let's show show them yeah. what he does. Yeah, exactly. Let's take a look. Let's get us out of here. Something I've always Thank wanted to do: <laughs> jump out yes. of a plane and skydive. Positive, yeah. So he says he's gonna skydive and eat a mooncake, right? Yes. Now you guys probably think he's gonna go into some Sarah AI five G bullshit, right? No, he's actually gonna do it. He this guy's in his seventies. One thing Pops. you have to understand, by the way, is both of these guys, they they're the same age. Yeah. Rick is like two years younger than yeah, this like other guy. Yeah, like 72 or something. Yeah, this guy, this other like guy is 74. 74. Yeah. Um, we know them well because they keep being used by Chinese state media <laughs> yes. and they keep showing their bios and, yeah. you know, like all this yeah. stuff. Anyway, uh, let's see how Rick gets on. Because, um, hang on, sorry. Get us out of there. This, the uh, tanky, closet tanky closet or whatever, or whatever yeah. you guys name him. He's, he's such a cop out with yeah. his challenge. Yeah, you'll see, you'll see. Rick rules. Yeah. Shall we go? Let's do it. Okay, let's, let's go. Good luck. So great. So Rick. Yeah. He's like, that's I love epic. how young he tries to be. It really is. It's just amazing. He dyes yep. his hair. He like deep fries his hair. Yeah, he's got the false teeth. He's yep. got the, you know, I think he's got false the look. teeth looks like, yeah. He's yeah. got the young clothes. Yeah. Here he goes. <laughs> he's strapped All right, in. Rick, you can do Rick's it. strapped in. Go! What what's he gonna say? It's epic. He actually did it. Yeah. He's trying to eat the mooncake. That's a fail. Look, it flew away. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so good. <laughs> Go Rick. Yeah, go Rick. I tell you what. Yeah. That is the bravest shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I would never skydive in China. No, me neither. Not with the safety regulations. No, like the no, best no, instructor. No. Yeah. You see, he's so diplomatic. Really great yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 
Oh, oh. See, see, it's like a link. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. It's fantastic. Oh, Hold on, pause it. Yeah. What? Tell me how jealous this other dude looks. Yeah. Rick just jumped out of a plane and ate a moon cake. Yeah, he actually did something yeah. really cool. So what is he going to do? Well, let's find out. Well, actually, the way this is structured, guys, is... <laughs> okay, before we find out what Tanky Claws does... Is that what you're calling him, Tanky Claws? I, until someone comes up with something better, I'm calling him Tanky Claws. I'll keep my eye on the chat. Yeah, okay. So I'm what's watching your you guys. Telling? Okay, so who is this guy? It was kind of. A, Are you asking me? Well, I did a little bit of a deep okay. dive. There yeah, he is at is a Lei Fong Appreciation Day singing a thing. Um, I put together a little introduction to who this guy is. He's an English teacher who teaches at a university, um, at the Minzu University of China in Beijing. Okay. Okay. Uh, and if you're wondering what's written on his hats, he always has his name written <laughs> on his hats. Because I was like, what is on his hat? It's like Marka Lewin. Yeah. yeah. Which is, you know, his name is Mark Levine. So he just has his name Mark in Chinese. Mark Levine, yeah. Imagine walking around with your name on your head. I mean, that's ridiculous. Let me get a, a hat that says Winston Stozel. Yeah. I'm just going to put that on my head and walk everywhere. Yeah. Look, that's me. That's just ridiculous. But you know why? Why? It shows a very clear lack of understanding of Chinese because he thinks it's a novelty to have Chinese characters on his head. He's like, oh, look at these moon runes. I, I mean, I think there's there's other motivations, but whatever like the narcissism. case, now, now you know what that is on his head. Um, during, I, I watched a bunch of state media documentaries about him, and you thank, cannot... Thank you, Claus. Yeah, like. you cannot make this up. In his house, okay, they do a pan of his shelves. He's literally got a picture <laughs> of Che Guevara and Fidel Castro Maybe. and his commie bullshit everywhere, okay? I'm sorry, but like, you know, I make fun of college students wearing Che Guevara I was about to say, what is he, a modern college student? He was probably that guy and he never grew out of it, you know? Yeah, he's like, I fight the man type shit. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to go to China where there's real communism so yeah. I can really live the dream, you know? Sure. Uh, anyway... His pictures of what he does, you know, he's got up on his wall and um, he, he's, he's, he's an English Castro. teacher. Oh, he's an English teacher <laughs> with his three components of public speak. Nothing wrong with English teachers, by the way. No, but no, the, no, 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 no. The problem is the way that the Chinese um, official media portrays him is they portray him as a U.S. sociologist. Because back in the 70s, he did get a sociology degree. Fidel Crisco. <laughs> Fidel Crisco. <laughs> you know, the lard. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, whatever. We'll get we'll get I something. I made that one. Up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> come on, that's a good. That's one. It's a pretty good one. Um, but he he's an English teacher at this university. Okay, yeah, that's what he does. Is he teaches English, but he's made a massive name for himself as like a folk song singer. Okay. Okay. So let's take a look at some of what he gets. What he does. I actually, cut a little. Hi, piece. my name is Mark Mark Levine. I'm from the United States of America. But ever since 2005, I have been living in China. I don't speak Chinese, but I can sing a lot of Chinese. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bro clearly gets his wardrobe from freaking Party City. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he <laughs> does. Like, Can I have your Chinese aisle? Yeah. Take me your Chinese aisle. I, I, I need like something Chinese that looks band. Chinese. Yeah. So, yeah, just put a Chinese knot on it. Give it a Mandarin color. That is the most random felt, like, homemade looking yeah. shit. You know something, though, right? Um, Fidel Crisco yeah, is winning. Yeah, Fidel Crisco is winning now? Yeah. Yeah, it's I kind of like, like Fidel Crisco. It's, it's pretty good. It's a large good. brand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he um, uh, he actually got to China a year before me. Okay, so we're talking about the similar period of yeah. time. But he cannot speak. He Chinese. literally admits he's like, "Well, you don't speak Chinese, basically." Yeah. And I, don't I even can't think he can speak say Ch that. No, he can't. <laughs> it's like I can't speak Chinese, but I can sing it pretty well. I mean, um, this is twenty, almost twenty years. One thing, one thing you have to understand is that it's fun to to like clown on this guy a little sure. bit because he's he's quite a caricature, but. This particular thing that is in behind us is part of a massive Chinese Communist Party propaganda push that they did. They've literally got, before he appears, they've got Xi Jinping making a speech. And then they put him on there to, like, really solidify what Xi Jinping says. I don't know how much you put into this, but it's mm -hmm. really important because I watched, I watched when, when you're putting this together. Yeah. And the shit he says, I've, I've figured out what he is. And I think it's important to understand this. China always picks shills mm. to portray their propaganda. Yeah. 
that have no understanding of China because yeah. that means they can mold them however yeah, they want. Yeah, and because they can't speak the language. In fact, the less they can speak the language, the more useful it's they are. It's always better like yeah. that. They yeah. like that. Because yeah. usually, and I can't say for every every time, but the more Chinese a person understands, the more like us they are. Yeah. And the more critical of the Chinese government they are because they can actually communicate with people around the country, especially like we did in yeah. our travels. Not just and, walk around with this image and, yeah. oh, look at these happy people. It's so great. We, we can we interact with people and realize how many horrific things things happen because of the Chinese government to these yeah. people. Well, let's take a look at some of but what he's... I, I oh, do yeah. have one thing I have to say. What's that? I figured it out very okay. clearly. He was this communist fantasizer yeah. you know, back home in, sure. in the US in the 70s or whatever. And he thought going to China, it would be this communist paradise. Mm -hmm. And what's happened is he has realized that the kids and the young people he met in 2005 to 2013 or whatever we're interested in that kind of stuff. Yeah. So he goes and projects that kind of communist ideology everywhere. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll find out more. Anyway, let's take a look uh, at some of the, th the things he says. Because only a communist party is able to do that. Because only a communist party is able to focus and willing to focus on the needs of the people. So, I sorry, I've got to get us in here. I was like, this... This guy's claim to fame, like I said, is he makes music. Now, apparently, he never wrote any music before he got to China. And this is an important aspect. He used to play cover songs, okay? When he got to China, he decided, now I'm going to write my own songs. Now he's written over 75 songs or something, right? And it just shows you, China allows you to invent yourself, like yeah. reinvent. You can just make it because up. things that most people would literally look at and laugh, like if, if I tried to become a singer-songwriter today, and I pulled up a guitar and I sang, which you can see on Shaban Ho if you want to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah Coming this that. week, I'll, yeah, I'll have yeah. an improved. Anyway, if I wanted to sing a song and make shit up, people would laugh me off the stage. I'd yes. say, get the hell out of here. But in yeah. China, because they don't really understand and the cultural difference and stuff. And they're being polite. Yeah. They're like, oh, wow, you are so good. Wow, so good. And it, right. it feeds this ego. And now yeah. he's the singer-songwriter. But if you were to take him and his songs oh my and gosh. put them anywhere else in the world and get him to sing on a stage, people would literally throw bananas at the guy. But Bro, it's not even in a classroom. They're putting him in the top universities, in the top government meetings. Okay, anyway, let's listen to one of his songs. The knees of the yeah. My true love eats chicken feet. Chicken feet, chicken feet. My true love eats chicken feet all day long. My true love, she eats fish head. Eats fish heads, eats fish heads. My true love eats fish heads all day long. And although she puts things in her mouth that I would never touch. It's so <laughs> condescending. Imagine that. He's obviously talking about his Chinese girlfriend. Or, yeah, or you his know? wife or whatever. Yeah, you know, because in China, they eat chicken feet. It's quite That's common. That's fine. I eat it too. Heads. Like, why are you trying to, why are you throwing Chinese people under the bus for this? Saying you're you're superior because you don't eat this I, shit? I like what he says. Like, and although she puts things in her mouth, mouth that, that I would I never, would never touch. That's what I'm saying. It's like. It's so condescending. It's terrible. What how, are you doing? How is this guy, like, respected? CCP's, like, putting him on a pedestal. Yeah. And they're yeah. put, playing that song. That yeah. shit, horrid song. I'm pretty sure it's just a generic like song. Ah, uh, yeah. I bet you could use like Shazam and figure out it's just some other it's just bullshit. Just some, yeah. some let's random. You know, people I'm are making... throwing tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's bananas. see what else, what other words of wisdom this guy has to say. Okay. okay. Economic conditions that people are facing. The most important thing is the people. The understanding of the people-oriented and uh, is synonymous with Hold the on. communist. What? Hold on. Yeah. I don't want to, like, I, I want to keep this lighthearted. Sure. But how do you know mm. that they're catering to the needs of the people when you can't talk to them? Yeah. I don't understand this idea of having these pro-CCP shills that lived in China for 20 years and can't talk to the people. Oh, I don't speak a lot of Chinese. I've had some real fun time with Chinese people, you know? Mm. And we both understand it. You know, it's, it's amazing how, how far 
body language and, and gestures can take you without even having to speak each other's language. Yeah. To me, that's incredibly condescending that you didn't even bother to learn their language, but you live in their country. Yeah. What are you doing? It is, it's it's kind of ridiculous. You it's can, ridiculous. It, you could take it in any context. Think of any country in the world. Like, go to Swahili, right? But yeah. you can't speak the language. You walk around, you hand out some... I don't know, aid packages or something, and you like suddenly you really understand the culture deeply yeah. and stuff, but you can't speak to anyone. No. You know? You just understand. Them. Yeah, yeah. It's I understand just... all these people around me. It's, yeah. it's so belittling, dehumanizing. Anyway, the, the reason I'm showing you this is he's been recycled and reused on many of these propaganda uh, videos that the Chinese government puts together. You can yeah. see they're throwing all the ethnic minorities it's a white in monkey. there. Yeah. Let's be honest. Um, but you'll see they use his same like voice clip more than once. I've put in another one, but let's just finish this up so you can see. Party, and that's what the Communist Party provides, and that's the leadership, and that's the inspiration that the party provides. And we're happy for the progress, and we have, we have confidence that the party is going to lead us, lead us forward. I think the most significant way that I changed in China was I wrote songs. I had never written songs before. I'd now written more than 70. I will comply. Just for you, my lovely Asian eyes. Jeez! Come on, yeah. Come on with yeah. the songs! My lovely Asian eyes. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like... I will comply? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? We got anyway, his, we got his magnum opus for you, later. You, you... The 74-year-old has traveled extensively in the country and often sings self-composed songs about his experiences. The most important thing is the people. The understanding of the people oriented see, I, and uh, is, Let me pause it quickly. This, you can see in the background now, is the exact same words as the clip earlier about the people oriented, only the Communist Party could do its stuff. But this was a completely different um, propaganda video where they used the same yes. you know, clip, but in a different way. The Communist yeah. Party. And that's what the Communist Party provides. And that's the leadership and that's the inspiration Joel Crisco, that the weird. party yeah. provides. So do you think China would be the same as it is today if it were not for the CPC? No way. No way. Absolutely not. Belt and Road, China's get, gonna get more friends in the world. So what, what the? Okay, so now we have understanding of China is like, uh, like a, a, an hour YouTube video or something from mm. CGTN. Yeah, anyway, so look, I went through a lot of his stuff and I showed you some of the more lighthearted stuff, but he's he's part of these really uh, kind of sinister propaganda yeah. programs they Sorry put out. Yeah, and he goes and sits in there and pretends to be an expert on the Communist Party and how China runs, but he cannot speak the language and he has what no clue. What are you clue. doing? Yeah, he's literally just, I'm not trying to belittle English teachers, but he is only an English teacher. Right, but he's literally propelled to the forefront of state media. Yeah. And goes to government con like meetings. Yes. And gets a green card from the Chinese government. Yeah. He gets the friendship award in and the friendship in award. 2014 or whatever. And gets to go to Peking University and do presentations <laughs> yeah. in front of orchestras and shit. Yeah, These yeah. people that practice their whole life. Yeah. He's playing my true love eats chicken feet. That's correct. And his three chord guitar. Yeah. It's, he's got three chords. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So um, we had to bring it back to his challenge. Let's make it lighthearted again, all right? So sure. remember, Rick jumped out of a plane. Yes. Good old Rick. Props. 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 Like, seriously, massive props. I mean, even I'd be a bit hesitant to do something like Especially that. Especially in China. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so what do you think, um, what's his Fidel Cr Crisco is going to do? Fidel Crisco. Yeah, what's Fidel Crisco going to do? Let's find out. Let's see. So what's your challenge? What's your challenge? Well, I've been thinking about it. You guys both did one, so I got to do one too, obviously. Okay. And I've never sung in this cafe before. Wow. So I'm going to sing a song, one of Ooh. the songs I wrote, and it talks about the moon. What okay, a cop out. The moon song. Like yeah. What a freaking cop out. Rick jumps out of a plane, he drops the moon cake because his face is flapping around. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, he gets to slow down enough to eat one, does it successfully, walks back unscathed. Yes. He's like, ooh, that was a rush. I'm in my 70s. Yeah. Fidel Crisco goes, I'm gonna, I've never sang in this cafe before. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to sing a bon here. song about the moon. Let's see what his Voice. magnum opus looks like, okay? okay. Oh, to listen. I need my guitar. Okay. Let me put it wow, on. Wow, you got the guitar here. The holiday okay. will... Okay. Wow. I'm going to sing a song. The moon. 
head on a bit. Come on. Pretty good. Oh boy. Oh, Chris, go. That was yeah. that was a magnum opus. I love that song. Wow. That's so good. So wow, so good. Mm, can't wait to buy the album. I like. The, I like when he said the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he did a song about the moon. So, song about the moon. Yeah. <laughs> Can you play it again? Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's let's get his um. Let's get back to his. Um, I want to hear the lyrics. Okay. I think it's important to pay attention to the lyrics of the song. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Because okay? it's for Moon Festival. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. For Autumn Festival. Yeah. Right? I'm going to sing a song. One yeah. of the songs I wrote, and it talks about the moon. Okay, but great. The moon song. I want to listen. I need my guitar. Okay. Let me put it wow, on. Wow, you got the guitar here. Guitar. The holiday okay. book. Wow. So I'm going to sing a song. The moon. Head on a bit. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's too good. I'm literally dehydrated from all my tears. I know, it's so bad. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Love it. I oh, love it. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. What did Rick think of that song? <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, so good. Hey, why are you spoiling the next clip? I don't know. Sorry, it came, came there. Oh, I'm going to be honest with you. I think Fidel Crisco and Rick hate each other because they're both white monkeys. Yeah. And they're like so jealous of each other's fame. Yeah. You know I, I mean? They're definitely competing for that Marco Polo space over there. There's actually something to that, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. The whole Marco Polo thing. Yeah, he actually... <laughs> Fidel Crisco actually appeared in a talk at the P Peking University or something and said Marco Polo, you know, the modern day Marco Polo or something. I mean, yeah. that's a that's a derogatory word yeah. that people throw around about foreigners in China that just want to be special. Yeah, like they think they're special. Mm -hmm. And they literally, like state media called them that. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of it was, funny. It was great. Anyway, so now you know Fidel Crisco, you know, his uh, little story <laughs> over there. This is a problem with China, okay? Usually your peers keep you in check, okay? Because look, Fidel Crisco, he's obviously got his beatnik buddies or whatever that he hung, hang out with in the 70s and the 80s and so on. His peers, people on his level, people that he'd hang out and maybe jam guitar yeah. with or whatever. And he wouldn't cross a certain line because he'd be ridiculed or he'd be, you know, taken back yeah. a step. Yeah. If he's suddenly like whatever, sitting around his drum circle doing his thing, and he's like, you know what, guys, I'm I'm just like a really famous good songwriter and for yeah. the people. Yeah. His friends would be like, calm down there, buddy. Yeah. You know, like get off your horse. Yeah, get cowboy. off your horse. Yeah, exactly. They'll be like, you know, take it down a notch. Yeah. But in China, there's nobody to tell you that. In fact, you only get praised because you're different. Yeah. Yeah. And so you'll see, and we've got something great coming on Shabon Ho yes. about this, by the way. But yes. you see people's egos explode. They go to like yeah. heights and levels they it's, would it, never do. It really preys, mm. like China managed to inflate the egos of people that other people managed to help keep them down, yeah. grounded yeah. in their home country, like yeah. you said. But when they go there, the narcissism flares up almost like a, like a, STD rash. <laughs> it's okay. Like, yeah. You know, they right. come out and they're yeah. like just sp trying to spread their influence everywhere, and everyone's like, "Yeah, foreigner, keep keep it up." You know, yeah. it's yeah. insane. It's exactly. Insane. So yeah, your ego gets blown out of the water. You put up, you're put on state TV. Sure. Because you can strum a guitar and yeah. and say stupid lyrics to it. Now you're suddenly thinking, I'm so important. The Chinese government's given me a friendship award. Sure. They love me. So I'm so important. I'm spreading such an important message. And it really goes to your head. Yep. And you end up like Mario and all those other weirdos who are yes. just like, you know, 
Goldilocks this and that. You Their know? egos go to the moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the moon. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, we just have to make you aware of these guys. I'm sorry, They're I'm all just, part of the lore. <laughs> my favorite thing this week yeah. <laughs> is Fidel Crisco. <laughs> Me too. It's been hilarious. I'm going to sing a song. The moon. It ought to be.